Domestic violence is an issue that impacts many families. The founder of the Domestic Violence Action Group is taking steps to bring more awareness to this issue. Learn more about the pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose quality, value, distinction. Choose Stockton. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. Domestic violence is an issue that impacts many families. A local documentary filmmaker who experienced domestic violence in his own family has taken action to do something about it. Joining me now is Kel Ramos. Kel, welcome to Latino Motion. Thank you. Thanks now, I, I know you had a very uh, tragic and unfortunate event take place mm -hmm. in your family as a result of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what happened. This was November 2011 when it happened, November 7th, but basically my sister, she was seeing a guy, whatever, they were breaking up. And um, they got into some sort of an issue. I don't know what happened, but, he, you know, she went missing, and then I went looking for her, and then I found her. You know, she was dead in her, in her apartment. And then uh, they, they caught him three days later, and uh, we found out he had already served like 10 years of a 20-year sentence trying to kill the mother of his daughter. You know, a bunch of years so ago. he had a history already of domestic yeah. violence, and uh, mm. uh, I, I know this was uh, kind of a life-changing moment for you, mm. and uh, you taken some action uh, to do something about it. Tell me a little bit about uh, what your efforts are uh, to mm. make the situation better for the victims of domestic violence. Mm. Well, you know, the thing was is that she, you know he was lying about everything to us. So she did a background check on him, and it came back clean. So two weeks later, she, you know, he killed her. And, um, so how does that happen? I mean, you do a background check, and he yeah. was actually, he served 10 years. Yeah. So how does it come back with a clean record? He just he lied about his age the whole time that they were together. He, one of the, his lies was his age. Okay. So but like if, you know, if there was like some sort of a registry like Megan's Law where you could type the person's name in, and you would see the pictures of anybody with that name, and the age wouldn't matter, and you would know what they were on there for. You, you know, you'd have to be convicted of like a DV offense or something. So you started an organization yeah. and started sort of a movement in terms mm -hmm. of uh, getting more people involved yeah. in helping to uh, address domestic violence. Tell right. me a little bit about the organization. The Domestic Violence Action Group. So it's a nonprofit organization. It's about you know, it's about getting into action, doing uh, solutions that are a little different than what's out there now. You know, a lot of the solutions to uh, DV or to treatment is is basically just about you know cleaning up after some a situation happens. You know, like a violent situation happens, you know, you arrest a guy and you know, we treat the, the victim, whoever it is. Um, but the Domestic Violence Action Group is, is just as much about prevention, preventing it from happening as, as uh, we are about worrying about it after it happens. Now, we know that um, many uh, uh, sports, professional sports, mm -hmm. are, are trying to take some action in terms yeah. of domestic violence. And mm -hmm. uh, you're kind of doing something similar uh, mm -hmm. to encourage more men. Right. Uh, to take responsibility and, and to help prevent and, and, and curb behavior that right. can lead to domestic violence. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that's the, I think honestly that's the way to, it, it has to get fixed is, you know, it's the prevention. It's, uh, you know, men holding other men accountable, you know, publicly speaking out against it, changing the culture and society around that issue. You know, uh, right now we're, 
almost programmed to just worry about it after it happens and usually to somebody close to us that's when we care the most you know even you know we might not like it when it happens but if it doesn't happen to us personally we kind of turn our turn a blind eye to it and that's the problem you know so it has to be as serious as cancer and you know a lot of the other major issues in society we have to care we have to do stuff about it stop it before it happens basically if you're my friend or you're my relative or whatever and that's the type of behavior that um you engage in then we're no longer friends, we're no longer relatives. Like, you know, if you, if you engage in that type of activity, it has to be a life-changing event for you too, man or woman, not just man, you know, it happens both ways. Part of the problem is that a lot of it doesn't come out in the open. So, you, mm -hmm. you know, you, you may have family members and you never, you don't know that, mm -hmm. you know, there's a domestic violence situation going on sure. even within your own family, mm -hmm. extended family. Uh, what advice do you give uh, for those individuals who may suspect mm -hmm. that something's going on? Confront. You know, if it's somebody in my family and I suspect them, I need to, it's my obligation to say something, to ask. And a lot of times we know, you know, we know if something's not right, you know, if it walks like a duck and it's, you know, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Most of the time we know, um, but we choose not to say anything about it and um, we keep it on the wraps and we don't publicly speak out against it. A perpetrator, man or woman, has to feel afraid that if they get caught, their life's going to change forever, and it should. You, your organization has put together a public service announcement, a PSA. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. We're going to end this segment and go right into the PSA okay. and give that information out. Let's listen into the PSA. I pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence forever. I treat all women the way I want my daughter to be treated. I pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence forever. It's time to be part of the solution. I pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence forever. Yo juro a levantarme, expresarme, y unirme contra la violencia doméstica para siempre. It's time to be part of the solution. It's time to be part of the solution. It's time to be part of the solution. I pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence forever. I pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence forever. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. Join us online at www.latinomotion.tv. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We encourage your comments and contributions for show topics. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We'll continue our discussion with filmmaker and founder of the Domestic Violence Action Group, Kel Ramos, and his efforts to bring more attention to the issue of domestic violence. Kel, welcome back once again to Latino Motion. And, Thank you. Uh, you know, filmmaker is part of your title. Right. So uh, uh, you're also working on a documentary mm -hmm. in terms of what happened with your sister. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. So, you know, my sister, I guess what happened with her was the catalyst for why I'm doing everything with uh, the documentary, but it's, it's also about solutions uh, that are different from the norm that we're going to talk about, you know. Kids grow up in these type of houses, you know, they're way much more likely to offend or become victimized because it's just what you know, you know. Growing up, that was what my house was like, too, so it was just normal. You don't think about it as anything's different. It's just the way it is. Everybody in the neighborhood, that's just the way it was. Now, was there a personal transformation uh, uh, for yourself and how you behave? Well, I mean, a lot of it had to do with my daughter. You know, once she started to get a little older, it was like, you know, how, how could I treat her mom a certain way that I wouldn't want my own daughter to be treated? You know, I got to treat every woman the way I want my daughter to be treated or else I'm a hypocrite. Domestic violence crosses all racial and socioeconomic yeah. bond boundaries. Uh, but there is a cultural uh, part of this within the Latino community sure. in terms of the machismo mm -hmm. aspect that the man is, is the head of the household right. and you have to do what he says. And that, that, right. it takes a changing of attitudes, doesn't right. it? Yeah, I mean, to me, that just attitude just doesn't make sense. Not here, you know, I mean, it's almost it's an equal thing. That's how I see it. We're raised by women. Women give birth to us. We're raised by women. They, you know, 
how do we get to the point where one day we turn on them <laughs> and then try to take control? I don't, I don't understand that any, you know, anymore. Maybe when I was young, I thought like that, but that's not right. Just to bring attention to the seriousness mm -hmm. of domestic violence uh, and how uh, bad it really is. And, yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about the statistics in terms of domestic violence. All right, well, I mean, every day in this country, almost four women are murdered by their intimate partner, like my, uh, my sister was, ex-husband, husband, boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, mm -hmm. and one man. So about five, about five people are killed every day, just in what's supposed to be the most civilized country in the world. You know, you wouldn't expect something like that. And that's just murder. That doesn't have to do with, like, assaults. I mean, every eight seconds a woman is assaulted. Um, there's statistics out the wazoo. I mean, you know, kids that grow up in these type of, like, homes, like I was just saying, I mean you know, experience this type of behavior. It just damages your learning disabilities. It, it costs the country $8.6 billion a year in medical costs, loss of work and things like that. It's a huge, it's a, it's a really, it's a, such a big problem that we choose not to even talk about it that much. So if someone wants to get involved with your organization, mm -hmm. again, the name of your organization is the Mexican Violence yeah. Action Group. Uh, how can they get involved with your organization? You go to the website, the domesticviolenceactiongroup.org, Facebook page we have. We have a Twitter handle, you know, Domestic Violence Action Group. It's about taking action as a group of people. We want to take action and uh, offer some uh, alternative solutions, some different solutions than uh, what are out there now because what's out there now really isn't working. It cleans up the mess. It, you know, it deals with the problem. I'm not even sure how well it does that, but I won't get into that. But it doesn't, you know, it's like, you know, having a mop under a waterfall. The water keeps coming, we mop up the water, but more water keeps coming. We have to stop the water from flowing over the, uh, over the fall, and that's what we're about, the Domestic Violence Action oh, that, Group. That's a good way to put it. Uh, tell me a little bit about that, the, the PSA, talked a little bit about the pledge. Yeah. And uh, it, it, within the pledge, you, you really talk about several things. One is uh, standing up. Yeah. And I think uh, one of the things you mentioned is if, if you suspect something, you need to speak, you need to challenge it. All right. To tell me, uh, what's the best way to do that? I mean, it would be like anything else. You know, there's, the stigma shouldn't be different with this issue. You know, if I suspect you're my friend or family member or I know you or work with you and I'm suspecting that you're a victim or you're a perpetrator of this stuff or you're telling me things, I need to, I need to cut it, you know, immediately and say, bro, what you're doing is terrible. You know, or what's happening to you is terrible. Why don't, why don't we do something about it? We have to, we have to be vocal. We have yeah. to be outward. I, I guess I, I could use an example because I know that uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I was in a, in a setting with uh, one of my mother's friend was mm -hmm. talking about how he had to smack his wife because and he turns to me and said, well, you know, you, you got to show women that you're the boss. Right. And, 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 you know, I corrected him and I said, mm -hmm. if, if, if anyone touches my mother or my sister, I would certainly have a problem. So, uh, you right. know, that, I guess that's kind of the part, standing up, that's, right. that's what we have to do. Exactly speak right. up, right. Uh, speak out as, as part of the pledge yep. and unite. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the, the way that we could unite is certainly uh, through joining organizations like you mm -hmm. uh, and, and be part of that, that movement. Yeah, you know, so I mean, when I, that's true too, you know, when I say unite though, I mean just yeah. unite in that cause. You know, we don't have to be affiliated with each other or even know each other as long as we have that same mindset. Like, we're not doing this, you know, this isn't happening anymore. It's not right. It causes a lot of issues. And um, again, like I always bring it back to my daughter or whatever. How would I feel if it happened to her? If it ha you know, if it's, not, if it's not good for her, then it's not good for anyone. Uh, there also is a domestic violence hotline, so someone yeah. is uh, facing mm -hmm. domestic violence. We do want to put that number up okay. in case someone needs, needs help uh, uh, and, and, and needs to get out of a sure. domestic violence situation. They certainly could call that, that number. Sure. We're going to take a quick break, mm -hmm. and we'll continue this discussion. We're going to be right back with more Latino Motion. My name is Kel Ramos, founder of the Domestic Violence Action Group and I've been called out to take the pledge. I, stand, I pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence forever. And now I have to call a few people out uh, from around the country. I'm gonna say where they're from real fast. Paul Perez Barroso, Trent, New Jersey. Bert Lopez, New Jersey. McNone Brown Anderson from Maryland. Renee Michelle from Maryland. Joey Rivera from Jersey. Laura Abbott from Arkansas. And Diana McIntosh from Jersey, you've been called out to take this pledge and spread it far and wide. You have, you have 24 hours to respond. Thank you. 
Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. Join us online at www.latinomotion.tv. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We encourage your comments and contributions for show topics. I take the pledge to stand up, speak out, and unite to end domestic violence. I challenge Jonathan Diego in Atlanta City, I have Fuentes in Camden, and Mayor Mike Santiago in Millville to do the same. I take the pledge to stand up and speak out and unite to end domestic violence. I challenge Tirso Peña in Brooklyn, Samantha Fornerado in Miss Landing, and Denine Gordy in Galloway. Please do the same. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with founder of the Domestic Violence Action Group, Kel Ramos. Kel, we were talking about uh, a lot of the work that you're doing, and we talked about the PSA and the challenge. And one of the things that you are been working from the very beginning is that domestic violence database of registry. Right. Tell me a little bit about how your efforts are going and, and where it stands now. And that's. Um you know, like I said, if my sister would have, when she looked him up, if he would have came up, uh, we would have known she'd be alive still. So we wanted to start like a Megan's Law type of database for anyone, man or woman, convicted. If you're convicted of a domestic violence offense, aggravated assault or higher, you have to be convicted, and it has to be a serious offense, the intent to commit serious bodily injury. Uh, you get put on that type of a registry uh, so the public can see. Because law enforcement, they have a registry. They, they can tell what you've been uh, convicted of before, charged with or anything, but the public doesn't have access to that. So, so this would be similar to Megan's Law where you could put a name mm -hmm. or a, n a similar name mm -hmm. and you get all the pictures and data yeah. Yeah. of the individuals yep. that have been convicted. Yep. And this does not exist today? No. So what, what is needed? What type of legislation and is there legislation pending? Yeah, we have a legislation pending, you know, one of the, a bunch of assemblymen and women and state senators, they sponsored the bill. It's a public accessible uh, domestic violence database. We call it the registry. I'm trying to get it named after my sister, Misty's Law. That's what I call it. Um, and we were, you have to, you know, you get a law introduced and it has to go into a committee in the state. And so we went into the uh, Women and Children's Committee and we passed, unanimous, we had a unanimous passage. So now it's on the assembly floor. And we're just waiting for a vote. If the assembly passes it, it goes to the state senate. If they pass it, it goes to uh, the governor. I know we had uh, assemblywoman uh, Gabby Mascara here on the show last mm -hmm. week, and she's a proponent mm -hmm. uh, of women and children. And right. certainly, uh, I understand she's one of the sponsors of this she's bill. She's one of the main sponsors, yeah. Now, let's talk about uh, what other things are you doing to bring awareness, mm -hmm. uh, particularly to, to men, and, and behavioral changes. All the media outreach that we do is uh, it's a little focused, a little tweaked. You know, we, we include men's role in the solution. So we speak, we're not afraid to talk about that, you know, about what we need to do. It's time for us to be part of the solution. It's time for us to speak out about, about it. Do you think it's going to make a difference? Yeah, that'll definitely make a difference because it's the solution. The solution to every problem is always only in the problem. And if we're a majority of the problem, then the solution comes from us, too. Now, I know you started this some time ago, mm -hmm. um, and I, I've, I've known about you for uh, at least two years, and mm -hmm. you've been working on this, on this effort. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any success stories of men that have actually uh, felt that uh, uh, coming out has made a difference, that they've uh, been aware mm -hmm. of their behavior and, and hence yeah. have made improvements in their lives? Yeah. Personal, personal uh, conversations. Uh, one of the big uh, points that really gets a lot of men is when, um, you know, you describe their children. You know, because a lot of times we forget about our children with our behavior. So when we talk about our behavior, how would we like it if it happened to our kids? Like I say about my daughter and stuff like that all the time, you know, and that usually stops hardened criminals in their tracks. And they say, wow, I never thought about it like that. That's the only uh, evidence I have now of uh, change in, in uh, mentality and psychic, uh, psyche about the problem. We don't have any numbers, statistics yet, because it's just too new. And I think the, one of the critical points about standing up, if you do suspect 
uh, mm -hmm. that someone's going through a domestic violence situation to, to speak up. And sure. usually something that we're all very often way too reluctant to, to confront Absolutely. and address. And it takes a little bit of courage to be able to do mm -hmm. something like that. It does. And time. It's going to take time and a slow change. You know, it's a slow process. It's going to be going on for a long time. Things like uh, what the NFL are doing, you know, outwardly speaking out, men, that type of stuff. Uh, it, it, it's going to take time to catch hold. So I want to put out your contact information once again okay. for the Domestic Violence Action Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also want to put the important information up on the screen regarding uh, uh, where to go to get mm -hmm. assistance for domestic violence. That, again, we have the domestic violence uh, hotline for yeah. anyone that, uh, that needs help. Right. Uh, needs to get out of a the domestic violence situation, mm -hmm. they, they have a way to do that. Right. So really appreciate you coming on yeah, the show and talking you. about this very critical and important issue, mm -hmm. and particularly getting more men involved in it. Right. Thank you. And thank you for joining us at home once again here on Latino Motion. Choose quality, value, distinction. Choose Stockton. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, healthcare you can believe in. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas.